Hi everyone and welcome to Canadian Redneck Channel. My name's Dave and today we have a 574 here that we're going to be changing the clutch in. Uh, this is the same one that we already did the head on. Uh, so the hood's already off. That part's done. Uh, I guess we'll have to start by taking this loader frame off and uh, we'll go from there. I'll set the camera up so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll carry on. So now I'm going to pull the dash panel off of each side because we need to be able to get at these hoses and stuff to get them separated for splitting. So we got our line here for our oil pressure gauge has to come out. Got a bolt here with a clip on it that holds that pipe that bolts into the side cover on the side. Oh yeah. So we'll have to remove that so we can move that oil line. These four pipes here all have joiners here, unions, so uh, they come apart right here, which is really convenient. Ah, there we go. Now this line here is the fuel line. So we'll have to go shut the fuel tap off at the back of the tractor. <coughs> uh-oh. This is unfortunate. Ah, come on. Twisting the fuel line. I'm going to try to hold the fuel line, see if I can't get it to loosen up in the fitting. I'm afraid it's going to twist it off. Maybe, maybe I just twisted it right off. Yeah, I twisted it off. So, well, uh, that is just a flare fitting. I might be able to shorten that and yeah, put another flare on it. And there's a rubber hose around here on clamps. You need to take one end or the other of that off and release the hose. And right here on these pipes, there's a pipe clamp and it hooks to a stud on the firewall here. It needs to be removed. So the only thing left on this side is a throttle link right here at the back of the engine. There's a pivot rod on the rear engine plate and the uh, rod comes from the throttle at the back under the dash. And then there's a fuel line here. That's your return line back to the tank. Now's a good time to get the shutoff cable to the injector pump. Okay, we're ready now to take the uh, bolts out of the bell house that holds the engine onto the transmission. There are two up top in here that aren't terribly easy to get to, so it's best to get them first. So we'll get started with that. 
and then there's a string down around the side on each side. Okay, and we'll put in our guide bolts now. And they're just a half inch coarse bolt just to kind of keep us on track when we're sliding things apart and together. They're not really going to be holding any weight or anything. They're just keeping things lined up. Got everything ready. I'll get my uh, floor jack under the oil pan now. Okay. She's tipped down a bit in the middle. So we want to adjust the jacks to have it pretty much even so it'll be ready for going back together. So now we just push on the tires a little bit. She should come apart. Yeah, it is starting apart. Okay, we're out to the end of the travel there, and that should, yeah, I think that should get us what we need. Clutch disc is fairly typical. Pads might be worn a little bit, but not a whole lot. They're a ceramic pad, so the pads really don't wear much. They grind up the flywheel and pressure plate, but the springs are all loose in the disc for sure. And they've been looking like they've been rubbed on a bit. And the flywheel, or sorry, the pressure plate, I don't know, it's not looking worn all that bad here, but the fingers have certainly worn through. Somebody was using the clutch to pedal as a footrest, I would say. Now we get that flywheel out of there. Alright, I'm going to back this out. Oh, right, I didn't block the axles. That's one reason we put those in there. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to put a block in here by the axle, and then i got to go to the other side lean the engine this way and block it on that side, which I should have done before we went very far with unbolting. Uh, ah, there we are. So we have our flywheel here, and you can feel a bit of a lip on the inside edge but there's quite a lip on the outside here it appears to me like it's down probably a sixteenth of an inch or more so uh, every time you do one of these clutches you have to take the flywheel and get them machined anyway just because uh, like I said the flywheel and the pressure plate wear and it opens up this space between them so they machine a flat surface where the clutch disc runs and then they machine the depth like they machine this outside edge with the pressure plate bolts to get the proper depth of pocket in here so uh, we'll have to take this flywheel now and get it machined and I see there's some pieces in the in the in the bell housing there that appear to me to be from the uh, pressure plate so that could be why the clutch disc was slipping uh, just the the old pressure plate was wearing out and breaking up so anyway uh, I'll have to get this flywheel machined and then we'll be able to start putting things back together with our new uh, with our new clutch kit and another thing you always want to check when you're doing these clutches is this PTO input shaft because the splines wear now these ones are worn a little bit maybe a third of the way at max That'll be good for, you know, at least one more clutch. Uh, but, I mean, that is something that is known to wear on these. For some reason, they made the splines on the shaft softer than the material of the splines on the pressure plate, which is dumb. But I guess it's not from their perspective, because they get to sell you something again. 
So we've got our uh, newly uh, machined flywheel here. They machined the clutch surface here. The surface out here where the pressure plate bolts on so it's proper depth. And looks like they possibly machined in here where the bolts go. I sent the bolts and the new disc with them so that they could make sure everything was going to clear. They may have skimmed the heads of the bolts a little bit and it looks like they uh, uh, machined in there a little bit. And I've put the new pilot bearing in, which apparently I forgot to hit record for. But anyway, we're now ready to put the flywheel back on the engine. And if you'll notice, there's one smaller hole here. And that is where the dowel goes. Which you want to be paying attention where that's at so you can get it lined up with the dowel. Now, since this is uh, quite heavy and awkward spot to get to, uh, I've got a block and a jack there lined up so that I can set this on the jack and lift it up into place so I'm not having to try to hold it up and wiggle it onto a dowel and get bolts started and stuff like that. I'll have the jack to give me a little hand. So uh, I will uh, move the camera around so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get to that step. I don't know, it's kind of shadowy in there. I'm not sure if you can see the dowel here, but that's what we got to get lined up with that smaller hole in the flywheel. Then we can use that and push the release bearing out so it'll, there we go, comes off the forks just like that. So now we drive the carrier out of the old bearing, clean it up a little bit because it fell in the dirt, Put the new bearing down. Just carefully tap that into the new bearing. There. Perfect. We'll uh, put the carrier back in, the release bearing carrier. And you always make sure that the grease fitting goes down. That way uh, you can get to it from the inspection plate underneath. So we'll slide that back in there. Make sure we get the uh, pins on the carrier into the forks on the uh, release bearing fork. And we should give that uh, release bearing a little shot of grease. Yeah. There. Ready now for our disc and pressure plate. This disc is marked FW side, means flywheel side. Uh, but if your disc isn't, the bracket with the springs, it sticks out further on the transmission side of the disc. There we are, there's our pilot shaft for the transmission disc. There we go. You may be noticing that this uh, pressure plate looks a little different. This is what they call a diaphragm style pressure plate. Uh, the one that came out was a three lever. This is a direct replacement for 
uh, the three lever. Supposedly these are better. I don't know. Engineers, who, who knows? So now we'll start tightening our bolts up. And you'll notice I'm doing it in stages. I'm not going right tight on any of them right first shot. And now we'll take out our lining shafts. So we're ready now to start sliding her back together. But right off the bat, I can see that back end of the engine is down a little bit. It's the jack is settled. Yeah, okay, I've spent probably an hour and a half to two hours adjusting the jacks up and down to get the angle right. I got the uh, splines all started and then finally got the uh, pilot shaft started in the pilot bearing. We're all but touching. We can put the bolts to it now and tighten it up. We got the tractor back together. It's one of those things that once you get it in there to where you're ready to line the shafts and stuff up, it can take five minutes or it can take five hours. You just gotta be patient and wiggle at it until you get it going together so that you don't break stuff. Because if you get impatient and just try to jack it together with the bolts, you're gonna brace bust stuff and cost yourself more money in the long run. All right, well, I guess it's time we start putting things back together here. First thing we will get our throttle and cook back up. When I was taking it apart, this fuel line twisted off here right on top of the fitting. So what we're going to have to do is cut the line and refurl it. We need about, yeah, about four and a half inches. So we come back this way about four and a half inches from the bend. Yeah. And we're just going to cut this off here. Cut off this damaged part here. We're going to have to flare the end of this pipe so it holds the fitting. There we go. Now we flare the end of the pipe. Perfect. So now we can put our fuel line back in place. There, nice and snug. So now we just need a little chunk of fuel line here. Rubber fuel line is fine. This is a low pressure line. Almost none. It's just gravity flow from the tank. Dandy. So now we want to be setting our clutch pedal. Our link is down tight against the uh, release bearing. And there's still a long ways before the pin. The pedal is, yeah, almost down to the floor. So we need to lengthen this link out. You want about an inch of free play at the top, roughly, on these ones. Uh, this is an early 174 series and they have a 
spring that pulls the clutch up away from the release bearing. On later models they have a spring that holds the clutch pedal down, what they call a constant running release bearing. So those ones don't have any free play, but you have to have enough clutch travel to make the clutch work. So you set the uh, pedal so it comes up here pretty well to the bottom of this pan over the transmission tunnel. There we go. Yeah, that feels more like it. That should be pretty good. Anyway, tighten up this jam nut. Okay, we've got our fuel turned back on and uh, checked out that fuel line. Everything looks good there. It's holding well, so we can put our battery cable back on now. And I think it is time to give it a try and check see how our clutch feels. Should be lots warm enough to start with it. Well, seems to be working just fine. So now we can go about putting the rest of the tin work on in our loader. That concludes our 574 clutch video and uh, kind of the head, cylinder head video too because we've got the uh, loader mounted back on. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Please like the video and share with your friends. Uh, subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a great day.